In today's video, we're going to be using the new Kawu Tycoon Slim to print two new cases for my Raspberry Pis. I'll be printing one in regular PLA to get an idea of the print quality of the Tycoon Slim and one in TPU, which is a flexible filament that is perfect for creating bump and drop resistant cases, but is also notoriously difficult to print with. The TPU version will be especially useful for Pis that you're going to be using for traveling, like a portable media server or a NAS. This 3D printer was sent to me to try out and share with you by Kawu 3 d through the online 3D printing store Tinkerhav. Tinkerhav is an authorized reseller of Kawu 3 d products, and they offer three payment options, with the option to pay off your printer in four interest-free installments, making it more affordable for tinkerers to get into 3D printing. Kawu 3 d is a relatively new company in the 3D printing game, and they've successfully launched their Tycoon 3D printer on Kickstarter in April last year. They've now brought out a more compact and cheaper version called the Tycoon Slim, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at and using for today's prints. Its print volume is slightly larger than the Creality Ender 3 V2, but it's also around $100 more expensive. I'm going to be comparing it a lot to the Ender 3 V2, as this is one of the printers that I've got the most experience with. I've got three of them and they're running for a large portion of each day, so I really know their strengths and weaknesses and I can see the Tycoon 3D have tried to address some of these weaknesses in the design of the Tycoon Slim. The first and probably most noticeable is that the Tycoon Slim has a direct drive extruder with a filament runout sensor. Now I wouldn't classify the extruder type as a weakness on the Ender 3, but it does limit the materials that you're able to print with. With a direct drive extruder you're able to print with flexible materials like TPU. Next I've added a double vertical axis drive, and they've addressed the common problem with axis misalignment by coupling the two lead screws together with a belt underneath the printer. This ensures that both motors always start up in the same position and always move together. They've also done away with V-slot gantries, and rather provided a linear rail design for the X-axis and a dual rod slider design for the Y-axis. You'll also always get great first layer results with an integrated touch bed leveling sensor. You've then also got a number of now fairly standard design elements, like a color touch display, silent TMC2209 drivers, prints on resume from PowerOff, and adjustable belt tensioners. Assembly of the Tycoon Slim was relatively simple, as it is largely pre-assembled when it's shipped out. It probably took me around half an hour to get it set up to the point where I was able to start my first prints. I printed one of their test prints, which is a bird whistle, and then a version of my Raspberry Pi desktop case and each of these came out really well. These were both printed using their standard recommended printing profile, without any tweaks, and the print quality right out of the box is quite impressive for a printer that didn't need any manual leveling or adjustments to be made to the bed, so this is definitely great for beginners. So now that we've got the printer working, let's design our case and see how it handles printing with some flexible filament. I designed the case in Fusion 360 using a traditional split design, although I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi's mounting points and some brass standoffs to close up the case, rather than using separate screws just for the case. There are obviously some pros and cons to this, so I'll see how it holds up. I'm going to use a small 30mm fan for cooling, which will draw air in through the top of the case and then exhaust it through enlarged holes around the ports. I'm also going to add a slim i to c OLED display to display stats or status information if it's running in a headless setup. I exported the case shell halves and opened them up in Cura for slicing. I haven't used TPU before, so I'm still going to have to experiment with the print settings, but I did find some general guidelines online, and I used these along with Kaiwei 3 d suggestions as a starting point. Printing in TPU did have its challenges, and I had to play around with the settings to get a reasonably good quality print. Because TPU filament is flexible, it's really easy to run the extruder too fast and you'll end up with the filament folding over itself and blocking the top of the hot end. I had two initial prints fail quite early on because I was trying to print too quickly and at too low a temperature. After a couple more prints this is what I managed to achieve. There are a few signs of under-extrusion on this model, which is a bit of a balancing act between under-extrusion and a successful print, or over-extrusion and blocking the nozzle. I'll hopefully eventually be able to find the perfect combination of speed and temperature to get perfect prints. But other than that, the print is really good. 
I then printed out a second case in translucent green PLA as well, so that you can see the print quality difference between the two different filaments. On the translucent green PLA case, the print lines are really clean, the layers are consistent and the parts fit together perfectly. Now that we got our prints done, we can move on to installing our components. Let's start by adding our brass inserts into the case to secure the power and hold the standoffs. I'm using M2.5 inserts and they're melted into place using the tip of a soldering iron. I'm going to set the temperature to 210 degrees, which is the middle of the recommended nozzle temperature for TPU, so that should work well. I'm going to do the same for the PLA print while I've got it out. The power is then held in place on the base using some M2.5 brass standoffs. On the case lid, we can now add our display and our 30mm fan. I had to remove the header pins on the display so that it's compact enough to fit into the case. I just added a short lead directly to the pads on the PCB. The display is held in place using some M2.5 screws which hold a retaining clip around the back and these screw directly into the printed standoffs. The fan is held in place with some M2.5 button head screws and some nuts on the inside. We can then connect our fan and our display to our Pi's GPIO pins. I've connected the fan to 5 volts and ground, and the display to ground 3.3 volts, and then the two I to C pins, SCL and SDA. I'm going to stick a small heatsink onto the CPU, which with the fan directly overhead should be a good compact solution. We can then close up the case using some more M2.5 bathnet screws, which screw into the brass standoffs. And that's our power installed into the case. When you turn it on, you'll still need to program the I2C OLED display to show our Raspberry Pi's performance stats. You can do this using the script that I've used previously on my other designs. I'll leave a link to the guide on how to do this in the video description. Our case is now complete. We've got a durable cover that provides a bit of protection against drops and bumps, which is great for throwing into a travel box or into your car. I've assembled the translucent green case as well to get a feel for how it looks and fits. I unfortunately didn't have a second 30mm fan, so I'll be running this one without a fan for a few days until the fan arrives, but it should still be okay for light tasks. By using the Tycoon Slim over the past few weeks, I have been quite impressed by how well it's worked and how little I've had to do to get some good quality prints. As with any new company and product, there are a couple of things that could be improved on and Kawi 3D has already told me that they've made some improvements to the latest version of this printer, which is currently being shipped out. The clearance around the SD card slot is a little bit too big, so it's easy to push the card into the metal housing instead of into the SD card slot. Kawi are aware of the issue and have made up a 3D printable block to prevent this, which you can print out and install yourself. Some other things they've changed is an improved bed leveling sensor and a glass print bed. The glass print bed is great once you've dialed in your bed leveling, and I use these on my other 3D printers, but I actually quite like the simplicity and ease of use of the magnetic print beds. My only real complaint with this printer is that the user interface on the touch display is not as intuitive as I would like. There are a couple of missing features or features that I haven't been able to find. Things like preheat that automatically sets a preheat bed and nozzle temperature, or just generally being able to find options or settings, since there isn't really a main menu. Each item's settings are within each icon on the display. This is obviously not a deal breaker, but it does just take some more time to get things done. Overall, I think it's a great first printer, and makes getting started with 3D printing about as simple as it can be. Let me know what you think of the Kawu Tycoon Slim in the comment section, and be sure to check out Tinkerha for all your 3D printing needs.
Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews. 